What does it mean to live with struggling faith? Our scripture reading is from the book of the Old Testament prophet Jeremiah, chapter 20, verses 1 through 13. Now the priest, Pasher, son of Amor, who was chief officer in the house of the Lord, heard Jeremiah prophesying these things. Then Pasher struck the prophet Jeremiah and put him in the stocks that were in the upper Benjamin gate of the house of the Lord. The next morning when Pasher released Jeremiah from the stocks, Jeremiah said to him, The Lord has named you not Pasher, but terror all around. For thus says the Lord, I am making you a terror to yourself and to all your friends, and they shall fall by the sword of their enemies while you look on. And I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon. He shall carry them captive to Babylon and shall kill them each with his sword. I will give all the wealth of this city, all of its gains, all its prized belongings, and all the treasures of the kings of Judah into the hand of their enemies, who shall plunder them and seize them and carry them to Babylon. And you, Pasher, and all who live in your house shall go into captivity, and to Babylon you shall go. There you shall die, and there you shall be buried, you and all your friends to whom you have denounced falsely. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For, where, for, for whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord. Praise to the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. Torn Land is a book about Hurricane Camille and the great flood in 1969 that struck Nelson County in Virginia. It rained so fast and so hard and so long that birds drowned in their nest. Entire families were swept away by torn land because of the floods that occurred. In the second chapter of the book, Torn Land, the author states that there were two questions caused by this flood that hit Nelson County. One was meteorological. The other was theological. One was answered by charts and graphs. The other is a matter of faith. In 1981, the Virginia Annual Conference had a, a, a pulpit exchange ministry where the pastor from one region would go to churches of another region to preach for three nights. The region, uh, the church to which I was sent, was Bethlehem United Methodist Church, which was located in Nelson County. It had been 12 years since Hurricane Camille and the waters of the flood of 69 had struck, had been through Nelson County. But I found that as I was visiting, it was still a topic of faith and conversation among the people of that church. A question of struggling faith. A question about believing in God because of all believing in God despite of it all, and believing in God through it all. The reading from Jeremiah today is about Jeremiah's struggling faith, about faith because of it all, in spite of it all, 
and through it all. When Pasher, the chief officer of the temple, had Jeremiah arrested and placed in the stock overnight, it was because Jeremiah was prophesying that exile was coming, that God's call for repentance needed to be heard. It was a calling, a prophetic calling that had defined Jeremiah's life when God called him in the beginning chapter of Jeremiah, the first chapter, to be a prophet. And when, prophet, when Jeremiah objected and said, I'm just a child, God says, don't say you're just a child. As God calls Jeremiah to be a voice, not only to Judah, but to the nations. Well, we get, catch something of Jeremiah's personality type and his calling when after spending the night in the stock with his shoulders and his joints tight and, and hurting because of the stock and how he had found himself. Jeremiah, upon being freed to the st from the stock by, by Pasher, tells Pasher these words. The Lord has not named you Pasher, but terror all around. It was a prophetic word spoken through Jeremiah by God about how Pasher, as long as he was alive, and even after he died, would be a reminder of what happens when you do not heed God's word of how Jeremiah would always be a witness to struggling faith. Struggling faith, it's, it's really what the 20th chapter of the book of Jeremiah is all about. The first six verses of the 20th chapter of Jeremiah offer one of the most powerful portraits of the powerless confronting the powerful that's found in the Bible. As Jeremiah tells a stiff-necked, Pasher, that he will be taken into captivity. Here are the words, once again, that Jeremiah says to Pasher, And you, Pasher, and all who live in your house shall go into captivity, and to Babylon you shall go. There you will die, and there you shall be buried, you and all your friends to whom you have prophesied falsely. Now, the story of Jeremiah's prophetic ministry could have ended with those words as Jeremiah dropped the mic on the stage and walked off. But that's not how struggling faith works. As we hear Jeremiah's lamenting prayer in verses 7 through 10 of this 20th chapter of Jeremiah, highlighted by these words from his prophetic ministry, If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire, shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. Jeremiah did not want to be a prophet. He did not enjoy the work to which God had called him while he was still a child. There was no joy in the message God had given to Jeremiah that God had chosen for Jeremiah to share with God's chosen people, with the religious and political leadership of Judah. It was a message that Jeremiah struggled with all of his life. So he would go from hot to cold, from accepting his ministry to regretting his ministry. It was a calling he struggled with, despite of it all, because of it all, and through it all. Jeremiah trusted in God as best he could as he delivered a prophetic message of repentance. It was a message that would cause him to become the laughing stock of Judah as he would later be in prison for almost a year for speaking about the upcoming exile to Babylon. It was a prophetic calling that would not let go of him, a calling against faith that seeks guarantees for faithfulness, not always the result of faithfulness. Sometimes faithfulness by God and God is not rewarded by 
that which makes life easy. Sometimes faithfulness in God is rewarded by that which makes life difficult. There are no guarantees for faithfulness in God. There is only God's guarantee that we are called to live in faith, even when faith is a struggle. Jeremiah's faithfulness to his prophetic ministry is proclaimed in verses 11 through 13 of today's scripture reading from the 20th chapter of Jeremiah. As the prophet declares that the Lord is like me, or is with me like a dread warrior, therefore my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. Sing to the Lord, praise to the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. Those are triumphant words, words of great faith, words of hope, words of a future. Now, the story of Jeremiah's ministry could have ended here. And Jeremiah could have dropped the mic and walked off this biblical stage. But that's not how struggling faith works. The pendulum of Jeremiah's prophetic ministry continues on with the verse we didn't read in today's scripture reading, the 14th verse of the 20th chapter of Jeremiah, where Jeremiah says, Cursed be the day on which I was born. How quickly the pendulum can move. That's the way struggling faith is. The faith to believe in God because of it all, despite of it all, and through it all. It was this faith, this pendulum of faith, that caused earlier in the 20th chapter, verses 11 through 13, as, as Jeremiah says, the Lord is with me. It's the same faith that Jeremiah was struggling with in the 14th verse when he said, curse it be the day I was born. Friends, we live in struggling faith. Faith that can be triumphant and faith that can be questioning. Faith that can be hopeful and faith that can be doubtful. We live in struggling faith. We live in faith that believes in God because of it all despite of it all, and through it all. That was God's call for Jeremiah, and that's God's call for us. Struggling faith. May God bless you in this calling. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. Christ be with me. Christ with me.
May we pray. God, bless us. Bless us even as we live in struggling faith. Bless us in times of great faith. Bless us in times of struggling faith, in times of questioning. Bless us, O God, in the faith that knows that you are with us always. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. May God bless you with struggling faith this day. Because of it all, despite of it all, and through it all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. Thank you.